All right, so let's start here. Rolling blackouts are back with a vengeance following a brief reprieve over the elections. Yeah. ESCOM has implemented stage four load shedding until 5 a.m. on Saturday. Thereafter, stage two power cuts will continue until 5 o'clock on Monday morning. The ailing power utility says it's having problems with several units. Now, units at Letabo and Majuba have been delayed in returning to service. Yeah, a unit at Tatuka Trip. Three Kendall units have been taken offline and it's anticipated the fourth unit will also be shut down. ESCOM says stage four power cuts are necessary and turning off gas turbine generators will preserve the remaining fuel at power stations. Regrettably, and this ESCOM regrets again, we would like to announce that starting at 2 p.m. this afternoon, load shedding will be increased to stage four. This is uh, after the, 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 the tripping or, or the units at Kendall Power Station having been taken down three units earlier today, together with a unit that tripped at Matimba, one at Tutuka, and the two, the, a unit that was delayed returning to service here at the Litabo Power Station. Load shedding stage four will be implemented starting at 2 p.m. This will go on at stage four until five in the morning, Saturday morning, 5 a.m. Thereafter, load shedding will be reduced to stage two until Monday morning at 5 a.m. It is possible to reduce the implementation of load shedding uh, to stage two starting tomorrow morning because one, the weekend demand is lower Two, we will be returning two units from this power station from Litabo to Savis, one starting tonight and another unit during the weekend. So this will allow us to be able to reduce load shedding to stage two starting on Saturday tomorrow morning at five all the way until Monday morning. All right, so we've got a dark weekend ahead. Let's move to other news now. Six life sentences or an effective life term behind bars. Former police officer Nomia Rosmundlovo might find it difficult to get parole. Last month, Ndlovo was convicted for orchestrating the killing of her boyfriend, Morris Mabasa, and five of her relatives. Judge Ramaru Monama labeled Ndlovo cruel and hellish, saying she struck like a vulture after seducing her relatives into taking out life cover. NCS Linda Masakana has been following court proceedings and she joins us now. Hello, Slee. So I would imagine that this was a fairly emotional day in court. Tell us about it. Very emotional, Sally, I must say. I mean, we were uh, getting into the aggravation as well as the mitigation of her sentencing today. And uh, what we saw the state doing was bringing many of the loved ones who've been left behind uh, in the trail of bodies uh, that uh, Nomi and Lovu uh, has uh, basically um, left in her wake. And, uh, you know, the family members were going into detail about um, the trauma, the financial trauma, the emotional trauma uh, that they've uh, been suffering these past couple of years, saying that uh, absolutely nothing thing is going to bring them closure but at least if they know that she's going to get a sentence uh, that fits the crime uh, then it will begin that process you know talking about how uh, they miss their loved ones and how they trusted uh, uh, Nomia Rose maybe with them uh, but instead she betrayed them what the state also did uh, was to bring a criminologist who interviewed uh, Nomia Rose Marie a couple of weeks ago and the uh, criminologist actually said that uh, we can can uh, label uh, Ndlovu as a serial killer, uh, saying that her lack of remorse, um, her lack of acknowledging what she's done, um, actually could see her uh, attempting to reoffend. And so uh, she did recommend that she uh, be imprisoned to direct imprisonment. But let's just take a listen uh, to a little bit of what the criminolo criminologist had to say. Based on the information as set out in this report, the author is of the opinion that the accused poses a high risk for committing further acts of violence in future. Currently, there are no rehabilitation programs for serial murderers, but it is recommended that the accused participate in the available violent offender programs offered by the Department of Correctional Services. Psychotherapy with a clinical psychologist is also recommended, as is participation in other available programs during incarceration. And tell us a little bit more about what informed the judge's sentencing. 
Uh, you know, a lot of, of course, the evidence that was brought in was just so overwhelming, Sally, in terms of the trial. Over 50 witnesses that were brought by the state. Um, also, just uh, the defense brought in by Nomi and Lovu not being convincing. Um, also saying that, uh, you know, in a case like this one where you are um, uh, convicted of murder, there needs to be compelling um, reasons as to why you shouldn't get the prescribed minimum sentence, saying that there were absolutely no reasons uh, that she had brought forward by her defense and that she had to be uh, sentenced to a direct imprisonment because she was still a danger to society, uh, you know, describing her as a vulture, saying that uh, she lacked remorse, saying that she continues to deny uh, the crimes that she's been convicted of despite the fact that uh, there has been a trial and she has been found guilty. Let's take a listen. On the murder count, that is count 1, 2, 7, 9, 10, and 11. Have I correctly? Yes. Not 11, but 12. 12, sorry. That is the murder of uh, Homo Madala, um, Audrey Rovu, uh, Morris Ma Mashaba. And then number nine is um, Zanele Mota. Number ten is uh, Mayene Mota or Mashaba. The accused, and then Brilliant Mashaba. The accused is sentenced to life imprisonment on each count. I wonder, did she show any emotion in Glovo when she was sentenced? Sally, she was brought onto the stand by her lawyer for mitigation of sentencing. And one would have thought, yes, okay, she does seem a bit remorseful. She was crying, asking for forgiveness. But in her asking for forgiveness, she said that she was only sorry for the fact that the families and the court thought uh, she had committed the murders, not actually acknowledging uh, that she had, saying, uh, thanking uh, court officials for not treating her like an animal, but still maintaining her innocence. And then towards the end, of proceedings, Sally, as she was being escorted off uh, to serve her sentence, she then turned towards the gallery and started to address uh, some of the witnesses who were uh, brought by the state in aggravation of sentence, sentencing, and she addressed them in Zonga. And from what we understand from family members in court, uh, it seemed that she had threatened them. Um, others saying that, uh, you know, she was just merely addressing um, those witnesses, but uh, many of them in court saying that she had threatened them, saying that just because she's going to, uh, going to prison for Christmas this time around, that she possibly could be out next, next year, and that she was going to come for them. But that's just sure. what we've been told from the um, inside court. The video clip is up on Twitter um, uh, for those who want to see that interaction. And so, I mean, the fact that she got basically life behind bars means that the court believes that she's not remorseful. So she got six life terms plus um, um, uh, some other um, um, sentencing for, you know, defeating the ends of justice. But um, it will run concurrently. So does that mean it's 25 years now behind bars, very little chance of parole? It just means very little chance of parole because, um, mind you, it's six life sentences for the six murder convictions that will run concurrently. But don't forget that she's also been found guilty of fraud. Uh, she's been found guilty of defeating the ends of justice as well as attempted murder. And she got uh, at least 40 years for the fraud uh, convictions because it was on four counts. She got uh, at least 70 years uh, for the uh, seven counts of inciting um, uh, inciting violence against her sister and her uh, and, and her uh, children, uh, she also got another ten years for attempted murder um, on the life of her of, of her mother. So, effectively, it's it's life behind bars. An absolutely astonishing case. Thank you so much uh, for bringing us all those details, ENCS Lindelo Masekane there. And you know, Shahan, I am just. Um fascinated by this case because the first time I heard about uh, what she had at that stage been alleged to have done, it reminded me of a very famous female serial killer in South Africa's history, which is Daisy DeMelka. Mm. And Daisy DeMelka, she poisoned two husbands and claimed their life insurance and then was also found guilty of poisoning her son 
no one knows why because I don't think there was any life insurance on him. But she was imprisoned and she uh, was actually hanged for her crimes in Pretoria in 1932. And she's perhaps our country's most famous serial killer. And it, it seems to me that perhaps uh, Rosemary Nomiandlovo is going to be um, rivaling her. I mean, yeah. if you think of six uh, family members or five family members and her lover uh, that she took out hits on uh, to claim the life insurance, it is an astonishing, astonishing case. And I'm really looking forward to my chat with Professor Gerard Labaskachny, of course, criminologist, worked with the police for many years, and he's written a book on profiling yeah. uh, serial killers. So we'll get lots more detail in the next hour. Also